Hey guys, Mr. B here. In this video, we're going to be going through the chapter 5.1 practice problem. So let's begin with here. Number one, Rutherford's planetary model of the atom could not explain. All right. So Rutherford's model of the atom um, could not explain any properties of elements. Um, that is not entirely true. Um, letter B, the chemical properties of elements. Uh, that is true. The distribution of mass in an atom. Um, nope, that's not true because his model had the nucleus and the electrons and stuff. So that dis that showed where like the mass is distributed. Uh, letter D, the distribution of positive and negative charges in an atom. Um, that was also shown because he showed the positive charge and protons are in the, in the nucleus. The negative ones are on the outside. So um, I would say that it's letter B, the chemical properties of elements. Um, his model did show some properties, just not chemical properties. It showed mainly physical ones. So um, we will choose letter B for our answer there. All right, number two, true or false, electrons must have a certain minimum amount of energy called a quantum in order to move from one energy level to the next higher energy level. Uh, yeah, that is true. So this was uh, determined by Niels Bohr, basically said that they need to absorb a specific amount of energy to jump from the first energy level, which is like a, a circle this big, to the next energy level, which is like a circle this big. Um, number three, in the Bohr model, the electrons move in blank paths. All right, so he, he said that they moved in orbits, which are two-dimensional circular paths. So circular paths. And we can even say, I'll just leave it as circular, so. Okay, um, number four, the blank model of the atom is the modern description of the electrons and atoms. All right, so the model that we currently have today is known as the quantum mechanical model of the atom. So that's the, the current modern day description. So the quantum mechanical model of the atom is a modern description. Um, number five, this model estimates the blank of finding an electron within a certain volume of space surrounding the nucleus. Um, so this one is again talking about probability. So the quantum mechanical model estimates the probability of finding an electron within a certain volume of space around the nucleus. Um, probability, make sure you spell that right. Probability, yep, there we go. Okay, um, number six, what is the lowest numbered principal energy level in which P orbitals are found? All right, so remember that the number of sublevels is depicted by how many, what energy level you're at. So um, I'm gonna do some typing off to the side here to help, okay? So like energy level number one, which is N, N equals one, okay? N is the letter we use to denote energy level. In N equals one, there's one sublevel because it's the first energy level, and that sublevel is an S orbital. In energy level two, there are two sublevels. There's a 2S and there is 2P, okay? And energy level, oh, not what I meant to do there. Oh, geez, okay, let's undo. What did I just do? Undo, there we go, okay. In energy level three, we have three sublevels. Um, we have 3s, 3p, and 3d. And then in energy level 4, we have four sublevels, and that is 4s, 4p, 4d, and 4f. Now you'll notice that they all, by the way, kind of go in the same order, right? It's always s, then p, then d, then f. So um, what is the lowest numbered principal energy level in which p orbitals are found? Energy level 2. Okay, that's the lowest, because there are no p orbitals in energy level 1. And uh, of course, energy level three is a higher energy level than two. So the lowest energy level where we have P orbitals is energy level two, letter B. All right, number seven, how many orbitals are in each of the following sublevels? All right, so this one now, this question basically is, the answer to this, we strictly just have to look at the letter, okay? The number four or three or two doesn't have any effect whatsoever on this question, just the letter does. So how many orbitals are in each of the following sublevels? All right, the first one, we have four P. So in the P orbitals, there are three P orbitals, okay? Um, and this is directly from the notes. So again, if you're not sure, we can look back to these slides here. There's three P orbitals, there's one S orbital, there are five D orbitals, and there are seven F orbitals. So um, there's three P orbitals, four P, for 3D, since we're now in the D orbitals, there are five D orbitals. 
Okay, again, it doesn't matter if it's 3D or 4D or whatever. The fact that it's D means that there are five of them. The 4F sublevel. So now that we are in F, the F sublevel, we have seven F orbitals. Again, it doesn't matter if it's 4F or 5F. And then um, letter D, the 2S sublevel. Since we are in the S sublevel, there is only one S orbital because there's only one type of orbital in the S orbitals and it's just a sphere. So that's how we answer that one, okay? So again, the, the, the vocab might be the tricky part, but if you understand what these terms mean, it's really not that difficult. All right, number eight, true or false, the maximum number of electrons that can occupy the fourth principal energy level of an atom is 32. Um, so we haven't talked about how to count electrons, so I'm just gonna look back at the chart here. And energy level four, maximum number of electrons, it says is 32, so that is true. Okay, that is a true statement. Um, we'll learn about how many electrons can be found inside orbitals and stuff in the next section, so. And then number nine, true or false, the electron probability clouds for atomic orbitals are always spherical in shape. That is false. Um, S orbitals are spherical in shape, but P orbitals are peanut shaped. And D orbitals are like at four leaf clover shaped. So um, that's not true. They're not always spherical in shape. So, all right. So that is it for this section of notes and these questions. Hopefully it wasn't too bad. Um, but again, if you have any questions, as always, feel free to reach out to me, send me an email, talk to me in class, you know, to make sure that again, you get your questions answered. So, all right, guys, I'm Mr. B. That's it for this one. See you in the next one. Bye.